on the internet, reality is often more difficult to discern. Beginning on April 21st, 2016, numerous strange comments were peppered all across Reddit, often deep into the comments, making them difficult to spot. These comments, though written in clear English, baffled readers with their nightmarish, disjointed ramblings. They spoke of strange phenomena called flesh interfaces, and of countries' desperate bid to construct them by dosing researchers with LSD, as well as experimenting on live humans, especially children, by sending them through portals. These posts were written in first person by a singular author, who went by the baffling moniker of underscore nine mother nine horse nine eyes nine. For example, in the funny subreddit, when a Navy serviceman noted how he was sick of Dubai, a comment appeared speaking of terrifying occurrences in the city. Part of it reads, Dubai probably has the highest rate of free-floating non-interface incidents of any major metropolitan area in the world. In one incident, a large group of migrant workers was segmented in an underground facility, perfect cross-sectional segmentation along the frontal plane. You could see their lungs working, food being digested, blood pumping on the inside of the heart, everything. They live for almost five months in this condition, absolutely fascinating to see in person. They closed the comment by stating that, they seem to show that the interfaces do indeed concentrate on flesh, living up to the name. These comments, naturally, piqued the interest of curious readers. When viewing this user's profile to read all of her posts, these writings began to make more sense, with each comment providing another piece of what felt like a hidden puzzle. Banding together in a matter of a few days, these users created a subreddit named after the nebulous author to track her posts and discuss their meaning. While it was clear to most that this was a novel method of disseminating a work of fiction, it was difficult to shake the feeling that they had stumbled upon something dangerous and powerful. They began to affectionately refer to the author as Mother Horse Eyes, or MHE for lack of another name or any other definite features. On the third day of posting, the comments began to take on a new, more narrative tone. While the posts from the first two days had sounded more like someone summarizing information, these new posts read as personal accounts of incidents taking place during World War II from multiple people, and they were horrifying. One post gave a soldier's account in Vietnam of finding a fleshy throat winding down into the earth and exhaling putrid breath, while a researcher's account details an eight-year-old girl sent through a portal and returning encased in a fleshy membrane that fed her a constant high dose of an LSD-like substance. This sudden flurry of specificity was fascinating to the readers, and equally concerning and terrifying to those encountering Mother Horse Eye's comments for the first time. The community was split. Some people thought that this was an elaborate work of fiction, while others thought that Mother Horse Eyes actually had serious mental issues and that she earnestly believed that what she was writing was real. Still more suspected that these posts were a marketing campaign whose purpose would eventually be made clear. Sometime during the third day or at the beginning of the fourth day, Mother Horse Eyes did something surprising. She addressed the community directly through a text post in the subreddit dedicated to her, entitled, Hello, Friends. In this post, she stated that she was in fact a he. He was a, quote, 30-something American male without the benefit of a college education or a stable job. Sadly, I have spent most of my life drunk. He explained his writing by saying that, quote, I am attempting to use the techniques of fiction and suspense to hopefully generation interest in this information. Your subreddit furthers this aim, and I sincerely thank you for creating it. The grammatical error is his. He continued by stating that, We must sort through the many possible pasts to find the few possible futures which result in a humanity free to live and die as humans, and not as an unholy agglomeration of mindless flesh. Through repeated self-experimentation, I have fractured the time state of my brain, and now it exists in an ever-shifting state between various pasts which didn't happen. He closed with an ominous statement. We are on the verge, all of us. Times are dire. We are about to be gathered again into the arms of the mother, to become one flesh with her. The mother who gathers lost children. The mother I have seen in dark spaces since I was a little child, back when I called her the mother with horse eyes. We are about to meet her again. 
we are about to be unborn. Ironically, this fourth wall break solidified the suspicions of many readers, that Mother Horse Eyes was not a mad rambler, but rather an excellent writer, one that had drawn each of them into his narrative construct. If there was a major error in his work, it was that the writing was too good, and some suspected the occasional grammatical error or missing word was intentional to build this facade of an uneducated man. They remarked on the execution of such a strange meta-narrative, with a writer pretending to be a character with a fractured consciousness who spoke in the voices of even more characters who may or may not have ever existed, and may or may not eventually exist, as well as other characters who may exist in parallel realities. Others, however, still were convinced that the writer was mentally ill, and that he believed that these narratives were real in other dimensions, citing his apparent fervor. But soon, these readers would be faced with the fragility of such a novel method of authorship. Soon after Mother Horse Eyes published his self-post, the subreddit was locked. Readers were confused. One of them, under the name Wismer, created a new subreddit by abbreviating the author's username to 9m9h9e9 so that the people rallied around the narrative could collect themselves. Another user, a moderator of the subreddit under the name GabbyCat, was able to elucidate some of the situation. She wrote, The primary mod slash creator, Catan Overlord, has removed all mods and made the sub private. This was verified by a Reddit admin. Sorry everyone. She goes on to state that, I've also asked for a copy of the wiki that I spent several hours working on last night, but I doubt that I will be given it. I am working on a backup from Sunday, and I have saved all posts to today. However, Gabby mentioned that, quote, The only thing missing is the author self-post in the old sub. Can't get it. One other person, however, had a plan. Digging into the Google cache of the subreddit, user Behemoth the Cat was able to retrieve the post in its entirety and post it to the new subreddit. Remarking on their panic, Behemoth said, quote, Once it dawned on me that because that subreddit is gone, the post could be lost forever. I had to find it. Gabby swiftly added the post onto the new wiki, which she had rebuilt from scratch by retrieving the original posts from Mother Horse Eye's user page. Despite the work of these readers, their old subreddit was still barred from them. People attempted to message Catan Overlord, but their queries were rebuffed. One user, when asking what was going on, received a message from the new singular moderator, I Like Weird Subs, that simply read, Choo Choo. After I Like Weird Subs posted in the new subreddit, it was clear that this account was created by Catan Overlord to keep the subreddit permanently locked and to occasionally post cryptic messages on the locked page. Why exactly they did this is uncertain, but Gabby Cat offers a potential explanation. She stated that she had had discussions with Catan Overlord about the mental state of the author, and she speculated that it could have been due to moral compunctions. Catan Overlord's actions as I Like Weird Subs, however, suggest a simple act of trolling. But by this point, their actions were rendered moot. The new subreddit was established, and the wiki had been refilled with information by GabbyCat, who had recopied all of the writing from Mother Horse Eye's user page. Even as the readers discussed what had occurred, Mother Horse Eyes continued posting daily narratives which sometimes only tangentially related to the flesh interfaces, or didn't seem to relate at all. Over the next month, a new fictitious piece of technology would be introduced, the hygiene beds. These operated as methods to enter a realm reminiscent of the movie Tron, where hyper-real programs could be played to simulate fantastic realities. Users would turn into escapists who wouldn't leave the beds for years, letting the sanitation systems overflow and their bodies decrepify. He described this phenomenon in a post. When a hygiene bed breaks, say, the healthy limb system fails or a catheter gets blocked up, it's supposed to cut off the internet feed, forcing the sleeper to get the bed fixed, but it's easy enough to override this cutoff function. Immersed in their feeds, people often forget that the bed is broken, but eventually pain or discomfort will force the sleeper to get their bed fixed. The pain of bed sores or the stench of a backed up evacuator is a strong motivator. But if the sleeper has direct sense feeds, they can switch off these smells and discomforts. They can even switch off the worry associated with the broken bed. By this point, knowledge of this strange story was making the rounds online. 
The first publication to speak about it, apparently, was Vice's online publication, Motherboard, who wrote an article about it, entitled, Underscore Nine Mother Nine Horse Nine Eyes Nine is Reddit's New Terrifying Mystery. In this article, the writer, Sarah Emerson, discusses some of the plot so far, its method of dissemination, and a truncated account of the closure of the first subreddit. Though the fascination seemed genuine, users from the subreddit criticized it for its misunderstanding of important pieces of the narrative. Not long after, both Gizmodo and The Guardian published similar pieces at the same time, but on that very same day, May 5th, Motherboard would receive something special from Mother Horse Eyes, an exclusive piece of the plot. The person in correspondence with him described the encounter. Quote, I reached out to Mother Horse Eyes on Reddit and asked him to expand its fictional empire here. The author sent the following back over the course of two lengthy direct messages. Beneath this was an especially long piece of original narrative, making heavy reference to the tale of Roman general Pompey the Great and his peek into a forbidden, sacred place in a Jewish temple. As far as anyone knew, this was the first time that the author had released narrative outside of Reddit. Around this time, creative pieces based on what had come to be known as the Flesh Interface series were becoming a common sight. A radio play was being constructed, as well as ambient music based on the series, and visual artistic interpretations of certain parts of the narrative became more and more common through the month of May. Mother Horse Eyes also, at some point, had begun consulting with Gabby Cat, the person who had created the wiki for the narrative. When asked about it, she responded that, quote, I talked to him. He responds when he feels inclined to do so. I'm not privy to any more information than you are concerning the story. On May 15th, the fragility of the narrative was once again tested. Mother Horse Eyes cheekily made his 54th post in the series, this one involving intense violence and gore, as a self-post on the Tales from Tech Support subreddit. Soon after, it was deleted by the mods, but this time the readers were prepared. After the incident where they almost lost the Hello Friends post, they had begun archiving new writings as they were made by hovering over Mother Horse Eyes' user page to check for updates constantly. This vigilance proved unnecessary, as this piece was posted again elsewhere as a comment. After this incident, Mother Horse Eyes seemed to select his venues more carefully, posting sexually explicit or violent material in subreddits that wouldn't be so quick to remove such content. As May dragged into June, more and more pieces of the narrative were released as more and more people discovered it. The posts got longer and longer, while narrative threads were opened and closed. As the story chugged through the month, the author would occasionally post to the dedicated subreddit, once with a teaser and once with a full-fledged update. For the most part, however, it was Gabby Cat who had become the mouthpiece for Mother Horse Eyes, and their correspondence had apparently increased. Near the end of the month, a user by the pseudonym Karen Castillo, named for one of the characters in the narrative, began posting in a strange subreddit called Dimensional Jumping, which discusses methods to alter perception in earnest, though her post was deleted by the moderators for being off-topic. The timing of the posts seemed to suggest that Karen had jumped out of her dimension and into that of the readers. Later, she would post to the Mother Horse Eyes subreddit, but she was met with suspicion. Others had attempted to create their own offshoots of the narrative, pulling attention away from Mother Horse Eye's original work, a practice they had come to label game jacking. Someone eventually asked Gabby Cat for verification of Karen's legitimacy to the narrative. By this point, Gabby had become a full-fledged editor for Mother Horse Eyes and had become deeply ingrained in his creation. She replied with one word, canon. This meant that another character posting to Reddit had now been introduced and confirmed to be part of the narrative, though their true identity remained ambiguous. Along with this, the author character had taken on a prominent role in the narrative at this point, heightening the immediacy while Gabby Cat swatted down Game Jackers and the line between reality and the narrative blurred. When Mother Horse Eyes made his next self-post on the subreddit on June 26th, an editor's note, later confirmed to be from Gabby, was included in the post itself, implying that it actively changed the narrator's actions to go drinking again. A few days later, the narrator described himself walking out of his apartment with a bottle of vodka and drinking heavily. And then, he went silent. Finally, on July 4th, after nearly a week, Gabby made a post to the subreddit entitled, Normally Scheduled Weirdness Will Resume Shortly. The text read, People have been drinking and talking. The weirdness went to another level and it's over. 
the end is coming. Here we go. Two days later, Mother Horse Eyes began slowly releasing long posts, which had come to be the norm until finally, on July 17th, he made his final self-post to the subreddit, entitled, So Long and Thanks for All the Chitinous Cruciforms, as a reference to an early part of the narrative. This marked his 100th post and, at long last, the ending of the narrative, having taken three months to complete. Though the ending was conclusive for the main plot, numerous subplots were left ambiguously open. But this didn't quite mark the end for Mother Horse Eyes. On July 21st, just four days after the final part was posted, Gabby put out a call on the subreddit for criticism and input on the rewrite, which was to be full of new writing. Then, much later, on November 30th, Gabby posted again that work was progressing on the rewrite. This came about a month before Mother Horse Eyes made another post, talking about what was coming for the rewrite. He stated, quote, The rumors that I have been hard at work on a book are untrue. I have mostly been goofing off. Despite this, I am close to completing the book. He claimed that the rewrite would have about 50% new material and that he was attempting to pitch it to publishers. In large part, the conceit of the story being anything other than fictional had, at this point, been dropped, but the reader's enthusiasm seemed to still be strong and the reception positive. Two months later, in February of 2017, Mother Horse Eyes began posting again, but after only three posts in three days, he again went silent. As of today, activity on the subreddit has reached a sluggish pace compared to its heyday, though Gabby still posts regularly. It's rare to see more than 10 users at any time viewing the page. Still, the narrative in its entirety remains collated for new readers to discover while Mother Horse Eyes posts are still scattered across old Reddit threads. It is a monument to the way the internet can be a venue for novel methods of narrative writing and how powerfully it can affect those who discover it there, where often the lines between fiction and reality blur.